Hello guys, welcome back to another video and today I'll be telling you how I got a 9 in GCSE Chemistry, Biology and Physics and how you can too. Now the GCSE Sciences are probably the subjects that have the most tips for them so I'm going to try and keep this video not too long and I'm going to basically give a lot of tips that I've given before and tips that you might not have heard before. So without further ado, let's get into the video. My first tip is to be able to go through a large amount of content very quickly, you need to be able to use either Seneca or Cognita. Both of these websites allow you to go through a lot of videos or a lot of questions and content very quickly. So if you're just looking for general revision of the entire subject syllabus, then just go onto one of these websites and go through that subject and what that website has for for that subject. For example, Cognito has a very small amount of questions after the videos and then you just go into the next video and keep on repeating the same process. With Seneca, you do loads of questions and also learn content at the same time, but it's very bite-sized and it has memes along the way to keep you engaged so you never really want to go off. So that's for learning a large amount of content very quickly. In terms of memorizing a large amount of content over time, it's flashcards. Obviously, I've already said this many times, but using Anki and Quizlet implement space repetition into your studying and allows you to be able to remember things over long, long periods of time. You may already have flashcards made and they may either be paper or not on Anki and Quizlet. That's fine, just try to space them out yourself. But if you do have flashcards made on Anki and Quizlet, then just use those to your advantage. If you don't have any flashcards made whatsoever, I would not tell you to start making them now because it's a bit too late for that, I'm pretty sure. If you think you can cover massive amounts of the syllabus right now making flashcards, then you go do that. But really, I do not recommend it and you should just listen to the other revision methods I bring up in this video. One of those being blurting. Get a topic, write down everything you know about that topic on a piece of paper, then use your GCSE textbook and in a different color write what you missed out and then only revise what you missed out by reading the other color pen. This just like flashcards implements active recall which is basically trying to pull things out of your memory which in turn strengthens that memory at the same time as identifying what you don't know and therefore being able to revise that. Obviously, we all know that we need to do a lot of exam questions so that we're not surprised by anything that comes up on our exam. And so we have something called exam technique and in that we're able to answer specific questions really well and be able to get every single mark possible for that question. So basically do a lot of exam questions, do a lot of exam past papers. If you've already done them, do them again because the experience you get from that is invaluable. If you want topic specific exam questions and Physics and Maths Tutor has a bank of them in its website, just go onto Physics and Maths Tutor, click on the specific topic that you want to study and it will give you lots of exam questions specific to that topic. Obviously, it will be past exam questions that already came up previously in past exams, but if you haven't done them already, once again, it's a very good way to just condense your revision into specific topics rather than entire subjects worth of content in an exam paper. Now, practicals are a very important part of the science exams and knowing them inside and out is also very important so you can get the marks properly when you do your exam. Free Science Lessons is the best website slash YouTube channel to watch to be able to know these practicals really well. He has a video on every single practical for every single science. I don't know if that includes anything that's not a QA, but what I would usually do was I'd get a piece of paper, watch a free science lesson video and summarize everything he said into that piece of paper and basically write down the method of the practical. I'd write down the variables of that practical and I'd write down things that could happen successfully. And then I'd also do some exam questions of that specific practical, all of which free science lessons provides on his website. Practicals aren't exactly something that you can flashcard. So make sure to revise those pieces of paper that you do when you watch his videos really well. So make sure to revise those summary notes that you make of his videos in a very in-depth way so that you can basically just blurt them out onto your exam paper. And this is important because the exam questions they ask on practicals, sometimes they can be cliche exam questions that they've asked many other times, but most times they're exam questions they haven't really asked and are quite unique. So you need to think of certain ways to answer them that will get you the marks. Although that's not a fact, that's just something I myself noticed. I don't know if that's actually true. Also, if you're just not feeling like revising 
in the day at all then getting up Seneca and just mindlessly going through the content that it has for your GCSE science is a very good way to actually revise the science even if you don't know what you're looking at you're just going through the information and going through the questions like it's nothing you're actively recalling information from your brain as you're answering those questions and with the bright lights and colors that Seneca uses you're going to see certain information and you're going to remember it much better than doing nothing in the time that you're procrastinating so that's a really passive way to revise when you're not bothered to revise basically this is kind of like blurting but teaching your friends concepts and like getting a whiteboard and writing down stuff about that concept of science is a very good way to actually remember that thing yourself because you'll find certain ways to explain it that you'll use in your own exam to explain that specific concept can't remember if i've already said this but doing past papers in time conditions obviously prepares you for the way your exam is going to work. So making sure that you're able to actually finish your exam paper in the allocated time is very important because there's a lot of content to get through in the amount of time that they give. And by doing exam papers under time conditions, you'll be able to prepare yourself for the actual conditions that are in the exam and not be caught off by the amount of time that they give you. That is all my tips for this video. I hope I didn't make that video too long and I hope the tips are actually useful because there are just a lot of tips that I've said before on many other videos. But yeah, that's everything. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.